Okay, in this video I'm going to show you um, some things about doing uh, AC simulations with LTSpice and I'm going to show you also um, how to do some things with um, parameters and dot step which is a very powerful command in LTSpice. So what I've done uh, as an example is to create um, a transistor level schematic of a current mirror differential amplifier and I've made each of the transistors um, 36 microns wide by 1.8 microns long like you're doing in MP3 with your folded cast code differential amplifier. And I've also created a symbol um, to go along with this, which I actually did by taking um, the op amp rails symbol with, uh, within the, the course uh, circuit symbol set. And I basically added a another line to to represent the bias uh, input in order to actually make that work i had to do a couple of things i basically copied it into my my project directory i drew the extra line um, and i added uh, the pin for vb um, i also had to rename these ports to match the net names that i had in my uh, schematic but i also had to go up to edit attributes, edit attributes, and I had to get rid of all of the stuff that had been filled in here in the circuit symbol library. So I think there was an X in here and then uh, value for like value or something like that. So I had to delete those and call the file by the same name as my circuit schematic in order to make that work. So you should be able to do that too if, if you if you wanted to take advantage of that symbol rather than having to draw your own. And then what I did was I created a, a test harness for simulating um, the unity gain follower, which is right here. So I've got my, my current mirror differential amplifier symbol here, and I've made a unity gain follower connection, and I've put a two picofarad load capacitor to ground on the output. Um, and then I've got uh, my bias circuit here, which is fairly simple. Um, I basically have taken an NMOS transistor that's 36 microns wide by 1.8 microns long. I made a diode connection around it. I'm forcing a bias current into it. And this diode connected transistor and the bias transistor inside the circuit symbol basically, or inside, this, inside the circuit, form a current mirror. And so my biasing arrangement is, is just a simple current mirror so I can drive a, a current level in here and bias the amplifier with that current level rather than putting a voltage in. So if I flip back over here, you can see I'm currently biasing with 100 nanoamps. I've got my 5 volt power supply between VDD and ground. and um, I've got my dot include emgr 3426sub and I'm doing um, an AC analysis. Okay, so I want to explain a few things about AC analyses. Um, so before LTSpice can do an AC analysis, what it first does is a DC operating point calculation. And so with all of the AC waveforms, signal source is set to zero, it basically tries to find all the voltages and the currents in the circuit consistent with KCL and the device models that it has. And so once it finds all of the, all of the operating voltages and currents, it linearizes the circuit, and um, that is the basis of the AC analysis. So an AC analysis is an analysis on a linearized circuit about the DC operating point. Um, all of the nonlinearities in the transistor models, all of the power supply rail considerations, all of the small signal versus large signal considerations are completely uh, absent in AC simulations. And so what we can do um, in an AC simulation is take advantage of that fact and use whatever AC input amplitude we would like. So my input voltage source here, I've got a DC value of 2.5, which is going to be my sort of baseline input level. But then my AC amplitude is basically one volt with zero phase. And that's a very convenient number to pick for an AC analysis because if I do, if I'm interested in what is the gain of the circuit, 
um, I don't have to worry about dividing out the input amplitude because the output amplitude is divided by 1 if I choose 1 volt and 0 phase. And so the output, if I click on the output node after doing my analysis, the Bode plot that I get is the transfer function. So that's one thing. Um, since I'm here at a nanoamp bias level, I'm going to make sure that my uh, absolute current tolerance is actually well below 1 nanoamp. So I'm going to change this to a picoamp. That's, recall that's the slop that's allowed in the satisfaction of Kirchhoff's current law. And so if I'm biasing things at nanoamps, um, I, I'd want to be well above um, that absolute current tolerance if I want an accurate simulation. Okay. So when I do an AC simulation, I get to, I get to pick uh, how I want to specify the frequencies that are going to be um, applied to the circuit. Um, I usually pick decade, so this is, this allows me to specify the number of points per decade, and it's a logarithmic sweep, and you get to specify a starting frequency and an ending frequency. So I've picked here one millihertz and uh, one terahertz, which are probably a little wider than I need, but that's what I've picked. And so when I click on the little run icon, um, I get here on the horizontal scale frequency axis, and I'm going to tile these vertically, and I'm going to just click on the output node. And you can see, okay, on the left axis here is my magnitude, 0 dBs, out to some frequency, and then it starts rolling off. Um, that's what you would expect for a unity gain follower. And you can see here that the 3 dB frequency is maybe around, oh, I don't know, a few hundred kilohertz and you can see it does some funny stuff here it flattens out at minus 56 dBs on the right hand axis I have the phase it starts out at zero that's the dashed line and then it goes down to minus 360 at high frequencies uh, which is the same as zero if you think about it right so it's um, does some funny stuff in this region here but then it gets back to being in phase and that probably represents some uh, coupling, direct direct coupling capacitively at high frequency. So if I uh, go back here to the uh, schematic, this is the positive input here. I can imagine that there's coupling directly through this uh, drain to gate capacitance onto this node, and then there's some direct coupling from the drain to gate capacitance of this transistor U5 with some appropriate capacitive divider that's going to get me that kind of non-inverting behavior at high frequencies. So uh, one other thing I wanted to show you, since you're going to have to find a bias level that gives you a certain unity gain uh, bandwidth, um, is that I can go over to this bias current source and I can specify it in terms of a parameter rather than as a value. So I can uh, put in curly braces a parameter named I bias, and then I can create a uh, spice directive here, which is dot param I bias equals 100 nano. And I can put that here in my schematic, and I can repeat the simulation. And it basically does the same exact thing because I haven't changed this parameter value. If I change the parameter value to you know, some other value like 10 nanoamps and rerun the simulation, it moves to the, the frequency response moves to the left. So my 3 dB frequency here is maybe around, uh, I don't know, 100 kilohertz. And so that's, that's interesting, but um, you, you may wonder why I don't just put in the value here. Well, one thing I can do with a parameter is to put in a dot step param i bias list, and I can list values. So I could say 1 nano, uh, 10 nano, 100 nano, 1 micro, 10 micro, and I can click on run 
And what will happen is that it will repeat the same simulation, whatever it is that I've asked it to do, in this case, the, the same frequency sweep um, for all of these different values of this parameter. I can also specify either a linear sweep or a logarithmic sweep in this dot step analysis. And this is really cool because it allows me to try several different values. I can find the one, let's say I need 10, 10 megahertz. Okay, well that looks like it's this one. And I can just go through the list and say, well this is the, the one nanoamp, 10 nanoamps, 100 nanoamps, one microamp. So that suggests that I need about one microamp to get on the order of 10 megahertz. And I could uh, refine my list to do a finer sweep around that, uh, that particular set of parameter values and hone in on the bias level that I would need. Okay, so that's, that is um, a C analysis with uh, a parameter. If I go over here to uh, export, and I try to export the results of the simulation, what I'm going to get is uh, frequency and the voltage V out in polar form of dB in degrees. So this would allow me to export my frequency response. I can also export uh, these complex numbers, which is what the output voltage is in Cartesian form in terms of real and imaginary components of uh, voltage. So that, that I can do if I want to analyze it somehow or plot it differently in, um, in MATLAB or whatever. So that's, that's that.